DC Nation, what's up? We're back with another video, and today, I'll give my review on the latest DC movie, Black Adam. Now, The Rock has been building up this movie for a while, he's been hyping it up, saying it's a passion project of his, and been saying the tagline, the hierarchy of power in the DC Universe is about to change. Now, did this movie live up to expectations? How I'm going to structure this video is we're first going to start out with a spoiler-free review, a couple minutes, so if you haven't seen the movie, stick around, and then I'll give a spoiler warning, and then I'll dive into spoilers. I got a lot to talk about, but yeah, let's start out with a spoiler-free review. Do I recommend this movie? Yes, I recommend you go see this movie because it is awesome. Now, the beginning of the movie is rough, alright? It starts out with a lot of exposition, and the writing isn't really a strong point of this movie. So yeah, at the beginning, I was very skeptical. I was like, okay, this movie is not really getting me invested right now. I'm worried, but 15 minutes into the movie, when Black Adam is set up, the JSA is set up, and we get to the action, once this movie gets going, it is awesome. And in terms of action, there is a live action this movie. I mean a live action, non-stop. And Black Adam, he is unstoppable. He's showcased in a powerful way. And if you were worried that The Rock would play himself in this movie, nah. He actually does good acting. He plays Black Adam. And I was surprised by that. And how Black Adam's character is interpreted in this movie is very interesting. Interesting. He's a fish out of water, similar to Wonder Woman in her movie, how it's just a person from a different time. You got that aspect of his character, you got the other aspect of his character, where he's not a hero, he's more of a villain, and you see him basically going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the JSA, their different ideals, and it's very compelling. I like the story of this movie. And the pace of the movie, once it gets going, it has good pacing. And I will say, at the end of the movie, it gets a little typical in terms of the villain and how things wrap up. But the very end of the movie is good, alright? Seth Adams' development into Black Adam by the end of the movie is very satisfying. You get a satisfying conclusion. And it really seems like this movie is the start of a great direction for the DCEU, the DC movies. Now, would I choose this over Matt Reeves' The Batman? No, I like the Batman universe more, but honestly, I would want both. Like, this movie convinced me that The Rock actually may know what he's doing. Like, he actually has a plan that could be awesome. So yeah, guys, if you're worried, if you're skeptical, don't worry anymore, go see the movie, if you like Black Adam, if you like action, if you just want an enjoyable movie with a good story, yes it has its problems, but there's more positive things in this movie than negative things. Like yeah, you can really go on the negative things in this movie a lot, be very critical. And I'll go into that in my spoiler part of the video, but there's more positive than negative, there's more things I liked. So yeah, I recommend this movie. And now it's time to get to the spoilers, so this is your spoiler warning, alright? If you haven't seen the movie, go click off. Click off now. Go see it. Go to your local movie theater. Check it out. Enjoy on the big screen. And then come back to this video. So yeah, I'm going to give five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Alright, let's get to spoilers, alright? Because I'm excited to talk about this. So, first off, let's talk about Black Adam's origin in this movie. They changed it up a little bit, alright? Because Black Adam's origin in the comics, it's been changed a lot. How he was back in time, con dog, he was picked by the wizard, and yeah, it's, it's been interpreted in different ways. Like, the comics go back and forth. But in this movie, what we find out is that Seth Adam was not chosen by the wizard. His son was. We see that his son was chosen. He becomes the hero that Con Dog needs. But then we have this new king that comes in and causes all this trouble. We see Seth Adams' wife, the mother of the Protector, die. And then Seth Adams going to die. But then his son, the Protector, the hero, gives his power. Gives the power of Shazam. The power that was bestowed upon him by the wizard to his father. So, 
when the sun passes the power to Seth Adam, Seth Adam becomes Black Adam, he gets his power, but then immediately the sun is hit by arrows and killed. And then Black Adam is born out of rage. He is born out of rage and he goes to get vengeance, kill the king, and then he gets imprisoned like he gets confronted by the wizards the wizards are like you are not the champion we're looking for so you're going to be imprisoned for well 5,000 years go to present day and he is brought back out because we got these two characters in this movie a mother and a son the son is Amon he's a very prominent character in the movie we got the mother Adriana who says the name Shazam and Black Adam awakens again and Adriana she has similarities to Isis the queen of Condog the wife to Black Adam in the comics but honestly I don't think they should take that direction I think that Adriana and Amon should stay in this movie and not move forward I thought their characters were okay. Like, they made some... Okay, Amon actually made some smart decisions in this movie, where Adriana kind of fell into the villain's plan. She kept getting tricked. She had an interesting background. I like the idea of the Condog people and how they're trying to be free. They're looking to freedom. How that paralleled with the past of Condog. Very well done. But yeah, Adriana, she was an okay character, but I don't think she should be Isis. Like, she should, nah. I think it would be better if, like, like, in the comics, you got Isis, who's the wife of Black Adam. She's powerful, too, and she's in the past. She's not in the present. I know some people may think, oh, maybe they should have the past version of Seth Adam's wife, the wife that was killed, come back and live on through Adriana. That could be an interesting way, but I honestly just think that the wife from the past should come back and Isis should be a different character than Adriana. That's my thoughts on it because I wasn't really connected with Adriana's character in this movie. You got some of your thoughts down below. Should Adriana be Isis or should she be her own character? But yeah, overall, Black Adam's origin in this movie, I was fine with that. I know some people are like, oh, it changed from the origin in the comics a little bit. Like, it still had big similarities. Like, okay, the wizard is involved, or the wizards are involved, and Black Adam, he, well, he doesn't become the champion. He's more of a villain. You see past con dog this idea this theme of freedom that's still there but in the comics it's not his son who becomes the champion the son doesn't pass it on that's just in this movie but honestly i like that idea i like the idea of the son becoming the champion and then passing on to his father and the son dying and the father being mad being born out of rage going for vengeance and then uh, over time people con dog think that he was a hero but he wasn't his son was the hero he was just someone who was looking for vengeance so yeah that's my first topic i wanted to talk about i like the origin of black adam in this movie you guys some of your thoughts down below on that did you like this origin or do you like a different origin from the comics now moving on to my second topic sabak the main villain of this movie, or really like just an excuse uh, for our main villain to show up in the third act, because okay, Sabak, the idea of his character is super interesting, because with Black Adam, he's a character that gets bestowed the powers of the gods, whereas Sabak, he's a mortal that gets bestowed the powers of different demons, and I really like that idea. Each letter in Sabok is is an acronym right and it's the first letter of a demon like for a s satan so stuff like that a abaddon like that's really interesting i like that you got a character who has the powers of the gods versus a character who has the powers of demons that could be written very well and could lead to a great story but it was not that good in this movie because at the beginning we got intergang which they are not good. I don't like how they're interpreted in this movie. They really were showcased in a weak way. Like they were getting beat up left and right, taken out. And at times I like how they're getting taken out because it showed Black Adam's power. Like Black Adam got some great sequences where he was just taking these intergang members out in the most brutal way. And I loved that. But it also diminished the intergang members. And you got this character Ishmael 
who manipulates everything, sets it up, and the third act, he's the main villain, he becomes Sabok, and he challenges Black Adam, and it makes sense, but it feels very typical. It feels very like 2000 superhero movies, where you got a story going, and then it comes to a halt, but then the third act, like, okay, we gotta finish this up, so let's bring in a villain who really nobody cares about. Like, the idea of the villain's cool, but it's not really set up. It, like, in this movie, it's set up, but... It's not set up in a compelling way, in my opinion. Like, it just felt like, all right, we got Ishmael. He's the villain throughout. And the scene where he actually meets the demons, it's, it's so brief that it doesn't hit. I feel like that scene could have been epic. Him walking in, seeing all the demons. You could have spent, like, five minutes there showing the demons. But they're more, like, CGI monsters. The demons weren't really differentiated at all, which sucks. Like, that had been very interesting. So, yeah, Sabok, not a great villain. He looked cool. He posed a challenge, and we got some great action scenes out of his character. But, yeah, I wasn't a big fan of him. And something else I wasn't a big fan of was him killing Dr. Fates. That leads me to my third topic. Dr. Fates and his death. The death of Dr. Fate. Now, before we get to his death, let's talk about his character. Played by Pierce Brosman. Pierce Brosman kills it. He does such a good job. Pierce Brosman owns the role. He has a lot of great one-liners. And he really feels like the only true JSA member in the movie. He talks about war times, the past, how he's been a part of the JSA, what he's seen. And I like how he talks about fates. And yeah, he did a great job. Like, Ken Nelson was cool in this movie and another thing how dr fates fought in the action sequences with him manipulating reality messing with black amp's mind messing with sabok's mind multiplying guys when dr fates multiplied there's multiple versions of him i got chills it was so epic it reminded me of just like the animated series that one storyline the terror beyond where we got dr fate solomon grundy aquaman and in one fight, I forgot, actually, I, I remember, Dr. Fates was fighting the hot girl, and he multiplies, and she's trying to take out each one, but she can't find the true Dr. Fate. I remember seeing that in animation, it was so cool. So to see it in movie form, so awesome. Like, I was hyped, man. When that was happening, I was invested. That's the part of the movie I loved. Like, the middle of this movie was so good whereas like the beginning it was rough right like it's a bunch of exposition just summarizing the past of con dog like that that beginning i was like man okay just stop telling me show me something like i hate when stories just tell what's happening and summarizes it and goes by a big event quickly like nah show me the ramifications of this event show me what's going on show me the action and when we got to the middle of this movie well really like 20 minutes in but the middle of this movie where there's a bunch of action a lot of showing and that's what i like like once it got to the action it was really good but yeah back to dr fates acting wise pierce Brosnan did a great job the visual effects on point his character how he felt like a jsa member really good now leading to his death though the build-up was good how he thought Hawkman was gonna die and he didn't want his friend to die so he took the place of it and then he brought Black Adam back out but the thing the problem the first problem here is okay his big third uh, idea his the third outcome was to bring Black Adam in there but why did Dr. Fate not bring Black Adam before they arrived. Why did Dr. Fate have to go solo, like, toe-to-toe -to -toe against Sabok? Like, did he want to die? It just felt very plot-contrived. Like, ah, oh, this gotta happen. We gotta have a death. Dr. Fate has to help Black Adam, motivate him, and Black Adam can save the day. It, it just... It felt more for the plot, not for the character. Now, I won't deny that Dr. Fate did go out in an epic way. Him trying to go against Sabok, use his power. It looked cool. But when he eventually died, I was like, oh man, that sucks. And when the Helmet of Fates got incinerated at the end of the fight when Hawkman, after Hawkman used it, which by the way, when Hawkman used it, was manipulating Sabok, I got chills. That was, that was really cool. But when the Helmet disappeared, I 
I didn't like that. Like, I hope that just means that the helmets went to somebody else. Because in the comics, the helmets never disappears. It's not like, okay, Kent Nelson dies, and now Naboo's like, all right, I guess I'm done too, so I'll die. No, Naboo looks for someone else. That could be Khalid from Young Justice and the New 52, that'd be really cool. Or it could be Zatanna or Giovanni Zatara. There's so many other characters that could take up the mantle. So I hope this is not the end of Dr. Fate. It better not be. Like, the fact that he was taken out in a plot-contrived way that... I don't, I don't like that, and if he returns, it's fine, but if this is the end of Dr. Faye, this is all we get, I'm mixed, because I like what we got, him multiplying the visual effects, the actor was great, the story of Dr. Fate, how he was referencing JSA, past, was so cool, but I want more. Dr. Fate is one of my favorite characters, I love the magical side of the DC Universe, and I think they should explore it more, explore more of Dr. Fate's character. Now, moving on to my next topic, my fourth topic, I want to talk about the interpretation of the JSA in this movie. Now, here's how I view the JSA from the comics. They are golden age heroes that inspired people during war times, mostly during like World War II, right? Now, in this movie, there is no, like, the only talk about the past and war is through Dr. Fate's character. Dr. Fate actually feels like a JSA member, how he talks, how he acts, but the rest of the team, especially Hawkman, do not feel like JSA members. They just feel like a typical team, and that kind of sucks. I was disappointed by that, because the JSA are some of my favorite characters in DC Comics. How they're showcased on the Stargirl TV show is great. They're just the golden age side of their characters, how they're true heroes, they're for the people, they keep pushing, and you got all these different heroes, Our Man, Jake Garrick the Flash, Alan Scott the Green Lantern, Wildcats, Dr. Fates. Like, there's so much to that side of the DC Universe, the past, and this movie kind of just pushed that to the side for more of a typical team. So that I was disappointed about, I didn't like that. But at the same time, I really liked Hawkman, Cyclone, and Adam Smasher's character. Like, I liked all their characters. They were really good. Like, they weren't what I wanted them to be, obviously. I wanted them to be JSA members, act like JSA members. And Adam Smasher, who had an interesting arc that was similar to his in the JSA Black Rain storyline, which I'll get to in a sec. So there's more potential there, but what they did in this movie with their characters was still interesting. Hawkman, he was cool. He looked great. Aldris Hodge did a great job. He acted well. And yeah, his interaction, his dynamic with Dr. Fate, his dynamic with Black Adam, Hawkman was cool. There's more potential there though. Like, they could explore more of Hawkman's character, but I get why they didn't, because Hawkman's character is one of the most complicated characters in comic book history, so that'd be hard to put in a movie, but if they would've did that, it would've been really cool. Like, they would've simplified it and added it to the story, I would've been pretty excited. Now, other than Hawkman, Adam Smasher, he's a really fun character. I like his character in this movie, he's funny, He's kind of like a dork, just making mistakes, trying to keep up, and his dynamic with Hawkman, like that one scene where he hits Hawkman midair, that was so funny, and then Cyclone, she's really cool actually, her background, her how she talks, the actress did a great job, and her power too, like her wind power, I did not expect them to showcase her character like this. Like in the comics, she's pretty cool. She's she's all right. She's not really in the comics that much, but here she is awesome. Like I really loved her character. So yeah, I like this JSA interpretation. It's not what I wanted, but I still like it. Now moving on to my fifth topic, which is more expanding on the JSA. Let's talk about JSA Black Rain, the comic book story that is so good, all right? And this movie kind of took some inspiration from it. So in that story, we got Black Adam, who shows up to Condog with his own team, which includes Adam Smasher and Eclipso, and then the JSA are sent 
to stop Black Adam and save Condog. And the JSA have a huge group in this story. We got Stargirl, our man, Jake Eric the Flash, Ounce Scott the Green Lantern, Wildcat, basically everybody you could think of on that scene. They show up, Eclipso is like the main villain, and you see this idea of, okay, justice. Should a protector kill these villains? And Black Adam's like, hey, I'm not a hero. I'm not saving these people. Like, if they're in my way, if they're an enemy, they're dying. Where the JSA are like, no, no one should die. So there's these opposite viewpoints. And that's explored in this Black Adam movie, which I did like. That was really good. I wish it was explored a little bit more, or at least a better way. I, don't, I think it was the writing. The writing was not the strong suit of this movie. At times, certain parts could have hit harder if the writing was on point. Like, the directing was really good. Like, props to the director, props to the acting, and the writing, uh, yeah, the writing really held it down. But the idea of Black Adam not being a hero, him going against that, going against the JSA, is the idea that was in the comics, in the JSA Black Reign storyline, and I like that. And Adam Smasher, I mentioned earlier that, okay, I like his character in this movie, but there's more potential. Because in the comic, in the Black Rain storyline, you see him on Black Adam's side. And they actually have similar viewpoints. And Adam Smasher struggles with trying to protect Condog. And it's super interesting. It's probably one of the most compelling stories with Adam Smasher. So I was hoping to see that in this movie. And we didn't get that. So you see how it was like disappointment there. But at the same time, I still like how they showcased Adam Smasher as like a funny character. So yeah. It's such a mixed bag. Like, I, I'm I'm mixed with how they interpreted the JSA. Now, another thing I want to talk about Black Rain is Eclipso. He's the big villain in that storyline. Sabok is not even mentioned. Like, Sabok, he's in the comics, but not really prominent. They add him in here. And I think in, like, a prior version of the movie, Eclipso is the main villain. So, it's interesting. They're definitely taking inspiration from the Black Rain storyline, especially like the ending, the end of this Black Ad movie when he finally is in Condog and he's unstoppable and he talks to Amanda Waller and she's like, okay, you can be in Condog, but don't leave your borders. Same at the end of the Black Rain storyline when the JSA tell Black M, okay, we won't mess with you, stay in Condog, but don't leave your borders. There's parallels there. And yeah, I, I really like that JSA Black Rain storyline. I also really like the World War III storyline from 52. I think it's issue number 50 through 52. It's like a short arc, but it's really good. It involves Black Adam in the JSA. And dude, it, I'm not going to spoil anything. Go check out that comic. Check out 52, the World War III storyline. Check out JSA Black Rain. I recommend both of those storylines if you loved this Black Adam movie and you want more content. Now, moving on to the sixth topic of this spoiler review. This is going to be a longer video, guys. I, I just got a lot to talk about. This sixth topic is going to be about Black Adam's character development. How at the beginning, he's a fish out of water. I like how they did that in this movie. Like the one scene where he's looking at the mirror. They didn't have mirrors back then. Or where he goes to the walls. Like just certain things like that add characteristics to Black Adam's character. It makes him more like a three-dimensional character, which I like. And as the movie goes on, you see him trying to adjust. And he learns through Amon, the son of Adriana, where Amon gives him like catchphrases, what he should say. And I like how Black Adam makes like connection to Amon and Adriana's characters. Like those, those were good. I like that. That was actually good writing there. And as Black Adam develops over the course of the movie, you see him struggling with this idea, okay, should I kill my enemy? Should I not? Am I a hero? No, I'm not a hero. My son was a hero, but I'm just a guy, a father, looking for vengeance. That was compelling. And at the end of the movie, when he's in the water and he's about to reunite with his wife and his son in the afterlife, but he chooses not to, he then says the name. Shazam and he takes down Sabok. That's an epic fight. That's a really cool action sequence when they're fighting. The visual effects are pretty good there. And by the end, where Black Adam, when he shows up, actually, this leads to my next point, my sixth topic. 
Black Adam's new costume, alright? When he showed up in that all new costume with the cape, the more bright colors, the bright yellow, it really stood out. It looked straight from the comics. Something I was worried about going to this movie was Black Adam's costume. Because the posters, the costume didn't look bad. The costume that's shown in the beginning of the movie. It's, it's not bad. It, it looks fine. But when I looked at The Rock, I was like, dude, he has the muscles. If they got him a really good suit, he could look epic. It could look really cool. Just give him a comic accurate suit. And what I like is that they hid the actual suit from everywhere. From the trailers, from the posters. They didn't spoil that. So when I was watching the movie... In the theater and he showed up in that new costume i was shocked i was struck i was like holy crap that looks cool i, I was so happy i'm like let's go because i was hoping they would do that i'm like okay maybe he'll be in this okay costume for most of the movie but then he'll get a new one but i was kind of doubting it i was like yeah maybe they're not i mean there's a reason they're putting him in this old costume on the posters but when he actually showed him that new costume and beat sabok and that one shot of him on the throne and he has his arm up just the iconic shot from the comics it gave me chills one of my favorite moments in the entire movie the very end just him on the throne with that costume so cool man like i was excited i like let's go and then he goes up and breaks the throne and looks out to conduct and that's how the movie ends so well done like yeah they did a black adam's character rights in this movie now another side of the dc universe that was a part of this movie was the suicide squad now the actual suicide squad not show up we had Amanda Waller instead. Amanda Waller was interacting with Hawkman trying to capture Black Adam. And they actually did. In the mid, actually like two thirds into the movie, they capture Black Adam. He allows the JSA to bring him to Task Force X. I was surprised they didn't mention anything about Task Force X being disbanded. Like that was a big development in Peacemaker. And the fact that Hardcore showed up, like that was pretty cool. She said a couple lines, she was in character and she was good. But yeah, I was surprised of no mention of Task Force X to Spaniel. I felt like that's a pretty big deal. But yeah, Hardcore then takes Black Adam in. And by the end of the movie, Black Adam's back out. He's in Condog. And that leads to the end credit scene. Now, let's talk about that end credit scene. All right, this is my ninth topic. We talked about a lot in this video. But we're finally at the end credit scene. The end credit scene, you see Black Adam talking to Amanda Waller. And she's like, all right, you got to stay in conduct. If you leave your borders, we will fight back. We will stop you. And Black Adam's like, there's no one on this earth that can stop me. And then Amanda Waller says, well, there is people who are not from this world. And we will send them. And not that that was just going to be it. But then, oh my gosh, Henry Cavill's Superman shows up. He, he flies down comes out of the smoke and says, we got to talk. And what made it so cool was we had the John Williams theme in the background and we got a new Superman suit. It looks so bright. It looks hope full of hope. It looks so dope, man. And then he's got the curl. And just seeing Henry Cavill face to face with Black Adam, who Black Adam is also a new suit that looks awesome. Henry Cavill, The Rock, face to face two powerhouses unstoppable forces and i'm just excited to see them clash now one thing i am worried about though is it feels like they're setting up black adam and superman to be rivals but that's not right it's supposed to be shazam and black adam like i i don't like them trying to set it feels like the rock is trying to push that and i like that the rock is pushing henry cavill to be back like he brought superman in he kept up with his word like the rock said that black adam and superman would fight or they would meet each other and he did that so props to him but i hope moving forward that it shazam shows up shazam should show up there should be a rivalry between shazam and black adam and superman should be added in there they get you know three-way fight like that'd be dope but Shazam needs to be involved. If they just skip over Shazam and push him to the side, that would be very underwhelming. Like, that would suck. And speaking of Shazam, his movie is coming out next. That's the next DC movie. And that moves on to my final topic of this video. 
the future direction of the DCEU, the DC movies. But yeah, Shazam, the next movie comes out March next year. And in that movie, I've heard some rumors that Wonder Woman would show up. So we got Superman in Black Adam, Wonder Woman in Shazam, and then we got Aquaman. And there's rumors, there's Leah, or not really rumors, it's basically confirmed that Ben Affleck's Batman will be an Aquaman. So the original, the OG Trinity are coming back. We got the Suicide Squad set up, a good Suicide Squad. We got the Trinity returning. We got Black Adam, who's an unstoppable force. Shazam set up. The DCU is moving in a really good direction. Now the problem is I like that direction, but I also really love Matt Reeves the Batman. And Matt Reeves the Batman universe does not fit in this universe. So we got two separate universes, and if they decide to just pick one, I honestly want to just go with the Matt Reeves the Batman universe, because that movie was so good. The Batman was a masterpiece, where Black Adam was good, all right? Like, it was a solid movie, I enjoyed it. More positive than negative, where the Batman is one of the best superhero movies of all time, in my opinion. Like, it's up there with the Dark Knight. Dark Knight is better, though. I've already had a video explain that. But yeah, I would go with the Batman universe. The fact that they're making a Penguin TV show, maybe a Catwoman TV show, and they're setting up a sequel that will maybe have Mr. Freeze. When they get to the third Batman movie, I want it to be about Batman being stuck in Arkham Asylum, Joker being the main villain, it could be uh, Barry Keegan's the Joker, but he's in Arkham Asylum. All these villains, basically Batman, Arkham Asylum, the video game, made into a movie. Like, that'd be so cool. You guys, some your thoughts on that down below. Would you be down for that? But yeah, getting to my final thought about that, the future of the DCU is bright. There's two options. It's just, I hope they don't make us decide, all right? I want both. I want to see Black Adam versus Shazam and Superman. I want to see Batman and Wonder Woman return. I want to see Aquaman. Like, I want that universe to continue. But I also want Matt Reeves' The Batman universe to continue. There's so much potential on both sides. And as a DC fan, I'm really excited. But yeah, guys, moving on to the overall score of this movie. It was a good movie. More positive than negative things to talk about. I like how Black Adam was, The Rock really delivered a lot of action, and it set up some cool things for the future of DC. So yeah, is it an amazing movie? No, it has its problems in terms of writing, exposition, sometimes directing and pacing, but overall, it's a good product, a good experience at the movie theaters, and I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. I recommend it. But yeah, guys, some of your thoughts on this movie down below if you like the video give a big thumbs up new channel make sure to subscribe hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on my next dc comics video this was a longer video i know i just wanted to talk about this movie in depth like just go for it and i hope you guys enjoyed but yeah thanks for watching and peace out